Some I wrote, some other people wrote. Robert De Niro's here. Yo, I got the gig 10 days ago. You want a perfect monologue? Yo, shut up. You got, you're kidding me, right? Slow down. I wrote some of these, and they're the ones you're laughing at. Look. Robert De Niro's here. I'm sorry, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I'm fanning out. I love you, Robert. Okay, if it's awkward, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to do that in front of you. I know it sucks. So last night was the Golden Globes. Did you watch it? Probably not, because nobody cares. Uh, nobody cares whatsoever about you know Hollywood celebrities getting together to pat themselves on the back and uh, tell everyone you know to save the environment, even though three fourths of them flew there on their own private jets. But last night was in particular pretty hilarious as the new host that they picked completely bombed, blamed the writers when his jokes tanked. He managed to piss off Taylor Swift and all of Taylor Swift's fans. Oh no, by the way, Jim Gaffigan told a joke about Hollywood is full of um, the absolute worst creepazoids on the planet. Now, some people think he was taking a page out of Ricky Gervais's book and trying to go ahead and insult the people in the room. I happen to think that he was making fun of you. He's making fun of people who believe that Hollywood is full of creepazoids. We'll take a look at the clip and you can decide because uh, I'll be curious to hear what you have to say about it. Now, the first article writes, <clears throat> Golden Globes 2024 were a new low for dying awards shows. Preparing for the 2024 Golden Globes, the award show made a bunch of reforms to its ethically wobbly voting body and got a new owner and moved to a different network. None of those PR efforts matter much when the broadcast turns out to be as god-awful as it was on Sunday night. If only we'd 100% cancel the Globes when we had the chance. This shindig agonizing. The shindig was agonizing. The evening was unbearably unfunny. Had just two or three great speeches over three hours. The whole celebrities get drunk for our amusement shtick was nowhere to be found. A-listers slumped in their seats, frowning as though detention still had 90 minutes left to go. The number one change to the globe should have made during this period of grand renovation was scrap the host altogether, unless they're going to list somebody as delightful and hilarious as Christian Wig and Will Ferrell were when they presented. Well, the Globes couldn't, and viewers, not to mention the celebrities trapped in the Beverly Hilton's ballroom, were forced to endure comedian Joe Coy's unbearable uh, opening monolo monologue. His level of humor was perhaps best exemplified by his Barbenheimer bit. Oppenheimer is based on a 722-page Pulitzer Prize book about the Manhattan Project, he said, and Barbie is about a plastic doll with big boobs. I groaned so loudly that I thought my upstairs neighbor might call 911. Coy actually made every Oppenheimer joke imaginable except the most obvious one. I'm bombing up here. The situation became so awkward that he snapped at the crowd uh, like it was an off night at the Comedy Cellar. Yo, I got the gig 10 days ago, the comic said. You want a perfect monologue? Yo, shut up. I wrote some of these, and those are the ones you're going to laugh at. Yes, Joe is a terrific way. Yes, Joe, a terrific way to begin a three hour broadcast by telling the audience, including Meryl Streep and Martin Scorsese, to shut up. Another paralyzingly weird moment was when the coy poked fun at Taylor Swift and her football player boyfriend, Travis Kelsey, who didn't attend. The difference between the Golden Globes and the NFL, Coy said, is we have fewer camera shots of twi twi Taylor Swift. Hardy, har, har. The show cut to the pop star who took a sip of wine, stared ahead, glaring. Right then, Taylor was all of us. I mean, I mean, like, ultimately, nobody cares about these people. They get up on stage and, like, I, you know, I've never, I, I don't even understand how Coy got this job. He is just he is insanely unfunny. I perhaps it's that he's I don't know the right mixture of of ethnicities and and people he sleeps with, but like I I still don't understand why so many normies watch this stuff like it was trending number 1 all night on Twitter. I'm like who the heck is watching this crap? I mean nobody 
to be honest, the Taylor Swift joke is uh, pretty accurate if you watch the NFL. Uh, that said, uh, Taylor Swift has been relatively unable to take jokes about herself for her entire career. And basically, that joke was as lame as it gets. Like it was, it was the, like the bottomest, the easiest joke he could have written. I mean, I don't know who Joy Coy is, Joe Coy is, but when you bash the writers, you say your own stuff's unfunny, you yell at the audience. I mean, I don't even understand who, what they think, who wants to watch us. It's like, it's like old people that fell asleep with the TV still on. That's who I think is like, uh, watches like late night, like Jimmy Kimmel is, you know, if, I assume anybody who watches Kimmel fell asleep and is having like a wine nap or something like that. I, I don't even understand. But then this joke now, Jim Gaffigan, this is why I want to point out an alternative opinion. Okay. I want to point out alternative opinion um, here to many people on in the talking head space, many of you as the right. So many in the right wing are applauding Jim Gaffigan. This is one thing the right seems to do a lot, and um, maybe the left does it too, probably. But it's like somebody's body of work is 99.9% .9 garbage. And then they say one thing you agree with, and everyone's like, whoa. Uh, for example, Fetterlump, right? So Fetterlump said, I don't know how anyone could call what's going on at the southern border, southern border anything but a crisis. That's what Fetterlump said. And so everyone's like, whoa, Fetterlump based. You know, and it's it's very predictable. But if you know who Jim Gaffigan is, if you if you don't know, I'm gonna tell you. And if you if you know who he is, you already know where I'm going with this. Jim Gaffigan is a guy that was funny 10 years ago. Um, and he had like one bit and he's, I, I think he's basically completely erased from the comedy scene. Nobody cares about Jim Gaffigan. If you listen to what Jim Gaffigan ever has to say, this is a man who suffers from chronic onset of Donald Trump derangement syndrome long TDS. He's got long TDS. You listen to him, the way he talks about, um, the way he talks about people who didn't get the jab, the way, he, I mean, he talks about, he has like all the telltale signs of, you know, he hates you if you don't have the jab. If you think of Jim Gaffigan, think about the hot pockets. Now, now Google how long ago that joke was. 15 years, 10 years ago, the guy is always mid. He had one little bit, he had one decent hour. And that, you know, I don't know, maybe he's funny now, but every time I see him appear on podcasts, things of that nature, the, the things he talks about, the thing he says um, about uh, Republicans and people he just disagrees with leads me to believe that this joke is not about calling out Hollywood um, PDF files, okay? It's more like laughing at you for thinking Hollywood's full of them. So Colin Rugg and just about every talking head who all share the same video, right? New comedian Jim Gaffigan makes Jeffrey joke at the Golden Globes, calls out Hollywood for being filled with these creeps. Amazing. He doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. I believe he's making fun of everyone who points it out. He's making fun of Republicans who, you know, call it Hollywood creeps. Here's a joke. The Golden Globes. I mean, I, I can't even believe I'm in the entertainment industry. I can't. I, you know, it's so unlikely. I'm from a small town in Indiana. I'm not a pedophile. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could argue, you could argue that he was calling them out. He was trying to take a little uh, bit of a Ricky Gervais look. I don't know, but you know, some people are choosing to embrace it. Maybe I'm wrong on this. 
because Jim made a risque joke during Sunday night's Golden Globes. While he was on stage introducing the best performance in a stand-up comedy on television, the com- comedian 57 said what we already said. His joke fell flat, albeit not as bad as co-host Joe Coy. Gaffigan did not make a direct reference to Jeffrey. However, his joke came shortly after. I don't think those two things are related. I think he's just talking about, you know, you know what people say about Hollywood people. I don't think it has anything to do with Jeffrey. Leonardo DiCaprio was sitting in the front room in the front of Gaffigan when he made the joke. Um, DiCaprio was there, blah, blah, blah. Um, we all know DiCaprio's name was also on a list, but really just that Jeffrey, um, you know, name dropped him. I think that, I think that his joke is making fun of the people that call all these Hollywood elites the things that they are or that they believe they are. Uh, I don't think that this is Jim Gaffigan making some sort of awesome based epic ponage. I don't, I don't believe that. Um, now I do think, um, you know, if he didn't have terminal TDS, if he didn't say the things that he said about people have chosen who didn't get the jab, then perhaps I would argue, or I would listen to the argument that he's calling them out or doing something of that nature. But I don't actually think that's what he's doing here. I think he's just normalizing. He's making fun of it. He's kind of, um, watering it down a little bit. I don't really think he's calling anyone out there, I th- but you know, you let me know what you think. I, I personally think when you look at the body of work that Jim Gaffigan has put together over the past, you know, couple of years, I think he's trolling the right. I don't think he's calling anyone out.